Welcome to Lazy Gecko Sailing. I'm Brittany, and this is Jeremiah. I came from the mud. For five years, we've been sailing the world and filming it all for you. Strong like a tree. Now come along with us as we head for the Caribbean. Make sure to click subscribe so you don't miss any of the fun. Hope they won't shoot me down soon. We've just wrapped up season six, where we sailed from the Bahamas to the BVIs. These were some really great times. You see them? You see them. Oh, hello. You can hear them like hissing. Little farmer's key. Look at you all sporty. You got muscular arms. Honey, you have to walk her in a circle. Go potty, Bella. As long as we can keep the boat going straight and not hit a rock, we're gonna be all right. Honey, those rocks are getting really close. That was pretty intense. Uh, really big swells, really high winds, and a tangled head sail and a husband on the deck. All right, just checking in. And why not give you a shower scene? Shake that thing. <laughs> it's only getting better, so let's get season seven started. First, we have a sail to pick up. Catch a ferry? Yep. Gonna take the ferry over to uh, the USDI to get our sail. We asked our friend John to ship us our parasailer from the States. It's here, so off we went. We sent it to Red Hook Mail Service in the USVI. It was super easy. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. All right, you happy we got the sail? So happy. I'm even happier that I'm having beer for breakfast. Nice. Um, with that being said, cheers. Cheers. I guess there's a perk to rushing and leaving the boat without breakfast. Yeah. Beer tastes better. It feels better. Well, we got our sail. When we purchased Calypso, we actually passed on the sail. But now that we've become accustomed to sailing the boat more, we thought it'd be a great addition. So welcome home, Red Emotion. We're out at this little rocky point waiting for our friends, Sail Limitless, to go by on their boat. They're heading out on the Ark today, the Mediterranean, so about three weeks and they'll be there. It's kind of a sad moment. I got really close with Crystal, Jeremiah got close with Neil, and Reese got close with all four of their kids. Uh, we met them a couple months ago when we were in Dominican. We were actually on the same dock waiting for a weather window. We, none of us could anchor out or anything because the weather was just so crazy. And we met there and then we've been traveling together ever since. We've been in the BVI's bouncing around for about a month together doing lots of fun things. This is by far the funniest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. The kids really get along so it's a little bit of a sad moment but we will see them over in the Mediterranean. They look like they are ready to go. Really high spirits. I'm so happy and proud of them. Just waiting to toot our little horn and uh, say fireball on the radio. Kind of funny, every time we're together, we do shots of fireball, one or two shots, because we have really big bottles of fireball on the boat and we don't drink fireball. And then it just kind of became like a group thing within Yeho to another boat, but they- Morning, morning, this is Breakaway. And Yeho has moved on down the islands. We're gonna meet up with them here soon, but we all get on the radio and do fireball on our working channel. So we got the fireball, the horn, and a camera to catch a picture for them. Fireball. <laughs> We're teaching them well. <laughs> <laughs> Send you off in the right kind of 
find a way. We've met so many great people along this journey. The Limitless crew have become close friends that we'll stay in contact with for years to come. Our paths might not be the same right now, but we're certain they'll cross again. For now, they're off for Bermuda and then Europe. Fair winds, Limitless. Ah, it's so exciting. Going off into the big blue sea. I think they have like seven to 10 days before they touch Bermuda. Man, I am like, I don't know, I feel kind of crazy for them, you know, and it's not even me. But I'm definitely gonna go home and look at the World Arc. <laughs> Do a la carte. It seems, I really like it because it's like a group thing and it's kind of social, you're all together. And there's lots of safety that goes into it too. It's cool. It was time to complete a few tasks on Calypso before we sail for the Lower Caribbean. First up, Jeremiah put my butt out on the bowsprit. How's it going? Good. It's interesting being the one up here doing like the knots and stuff. It's kind of cool. And now I'm just trying to make a straight line with the tape so it doesn't look like junk. What do you think? I think you did great. You want to explain what you did? Besides the um, line going up my butt, because <laughs> that's really what's happening. <laughs> oh my gosh. So we just loosened up this line. I walked on out here just so I could sit down comfortably. Jeremiah, I, I, why didn't you come out here? I think he's scared. I'm not flexible enough. I think he's scared of the no, height. Not a height. It's like four <laughs> feet, five feet. He's not flexible enough, and I am. What'd you do? But I tied a bowline from the bowsprit onto the shackle that's connected to the bowsprit, kind of like a safety. When we were checking into Puerto Rico, we pulled up to another Antares. There was a fella named Diego. He's the delivery captain for Antares. He came on our boat and gave us some tips. So what happens is blue and white line sometimes fails as it's rubbing or chafing. So we bought a piece of Dyneema and tied it from the bowsprit onto the shackle as another form of safety for us. It's kind of hard to find the bowlins, I'm not gonna lie. Just because one was opposite, it was kind of tricky, but Jeremiah walked me through it and now I'm just taping it up. video, honey. No. <laughs> this water's a little too murky for me. What? Are you happy? Oh, oh, oh. Are you... What? I'm out here? You don't like it out here? Good job. Thanks. Are you gonna massage my butt? It's a little yeah. sore. police station and there was like 50 people in line sitting just waiting I was like oh man but 
turned out it was they're waiting on some paper to be formed, filled out, and they just took me pretty much right away and opened a closet, and our stuff was sitting there on the floor. Oh, cool! Yeah. How'd the customs checkout process go? That was fine. Customs didn't care. They were like, "No, we're not gonna go escort you." So I went. To, I took a cab over to the police station, and uh, the cab was like, "I'll wait for you." And then when I got the weapons, I was asked the cop, I was like, you want, me to, you want to escort me or anything? And he's like, do you have a ride? I was like, yeah. And there's a cab outside. He's like, nah, you're fine. Like, okay. All right. Well, okay. So we could have done this from our marina. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we definitely could have. I didn't even think about that. But it's all right. Better safe than sorry. In, I want to get out without any issues and stage for our crossing today, which is exactly what we can do because now we're checked out. It's awesome, right? Yeah. So, I'm going to finish this, put all the weapons right back in the safe, and then uh, we'll fire it up and get out of here. we got a little bit, a couple hour motor north into the winds, and, uh, and then we'll stage for, for a mile. For a 90 mile crossing. Yeah. Austin. Me too. Um, we probably should wait till about nine. Are you kidding me? Mm -mm. Do we want to attack around sunset? The winds are going to shift it to 90 degrees around sunset. We don't want to go too far up. And we don't want to attack. If we wait, if we go too early, then we'll have to attack early and the winds will be right on our. 30 degrees. So we should wait till about 9 so that we can get the 7 hours of the trip going up so that we can right around sunset, you know, 10, 12, uh, maybe 10, around evening sunset, probably 10, and then we'll do our tack, and then the wind should start veering around 90 degrees so we can sail. Okay, so I can go back to sleep? Yeah. Lovely. Thank you for waking me up so early. I don't wake you up. You told me to wake up. Well, we were planning on leaving, but I didn't get the forecast so this morning. I'm gonna go back to sleep. Alright. Why aren't you eating your strawberries? Because I don't want to. Why? They're good for you. But I don't feel like it. No yummy snacks until you eat those strawberries. But what's wrong with my vitamins? I don't know why some. Can't have your vitamins to you eat your strawberries. No toys? No toys. Look at Daddy. He's sleeping. Dad is waiting on 9 a.m. So we can leave. We got up at 5.30. Read the weather and still had more time to sleep. And then Reese got me back up. But Daddy gets to sleep. That's okay. He'll be up all night. What? Daddy will be up all night. He what? does more during the night than I do. So it's good he sleeps during the day. We heard a weird sound as we started pulling away after weighing anchor. It was almost like a like a sliding and then a thud. So we re-anchored and now we're checking the under the boat. Coming up on the Lazy Geckos. It was like a slide and a thud. Major fail. Like you have your passport, right? Or like, oops, crap. Hello. And it looks like it must have lost power. And what kind of fish? Passion fruit. I've never had one of these. Dress or skirt? I filmed the Pirates of the Caribbean. Water coming from the bamboo is 115 degrees. My sunglasses kind of went boop right in the water. I'm not here. I got you. He's like, so I could be nothing in there and you could carry me like that. 
Did he really? Want more? Check us out at lazygeckos.net. Remember, patrons can get complimentary access. You can also visit our Vimeo channel. The link is below. Don't forget to click subscribe to get all of the fun. See you next week. Thank you.